welcome back to Cosmoholics Anonymous. I am your favorite girl, Bo Vintage, and today is Botox. Let's jump right into this because I'm sure my email is <sighs> packed with things that people need help with. Hey Bo, my name is Victoria. I'm 17, 18 in April, and I live in Melbourne, Australia. I love you so much. Thank you for always brightening up my day. You are truly one in a million. Thank you. Mm. Basically, it's my last year of school and my parents are divorcing, which is causing me great stress and I can't focus on school. My dad has treated my mom really poorly for as long as I can remember. He never hurt her physically or anything but or said mean things about her, but he would go out with his friends a lot whenever he had the chance. He would never come home until really early in the morning. He would come home drunk. He wouldn't do little things such as taking her out, doing things she likes, or even doing anything with her. Now, my mom has decided that she can't take any more of it. As we speak, I can basically hear my dad begging my mom to take him back. And my mom is just like, no, I've always forgiven you for everything and you never learn. And now that you realize I'm done, you realize you fucked up, which I believe is true. And the thing is, my dad has a brain tumor. And I don't want him to be alone because what if something goes wrong? At the same time, I want my mom to be happy because she's so selfless and my dad hasn't treated her the way queens should be treated. I need help, Bo. How do I stop focusing so much on their situation and start concentrating again in school? I really want to be a dentist or a doctor and this is distracting and makes me cry all the time. How do I stop feeling sick whenever my parents bring it up to me? I will probably have to move soon. How can I move and stay focused in school? Whenever I get questions about divorce, I I don't know, I feel like I'm I feel like I'm cold to the subject like because when my parents got divorced, I was ecstatic. Like, <laughs> and I always tell people this, and I'm just like, I was like legit excited to leave. Like, I was so happy to leave. I don't, it's so not even normal that I was happy to leave. I don't think anybody's happy that their parents are splitting up. And it wasn't even the divorce. It was the separation that I was happy for. I was happy to hop in my mom's car and go to the new place not even knowing where it was or anything about it I didn't care that I had to go to a new school like I was excited to go like it had just been so I guess draining so when it was time for the divorce I was like yes bitch yes like let's do this I was like I'm divorced too shit like I always said that I got divorced too so I'm very cold to the subject but this is not about me I think the best thing for you to do is to just remember that this is not your fight, it's not your battle, and you know what's right and what's wrong. Just because your parents are separating doesn't mean that they're going to love you any less, doesn't mean that they don't love each other, but sometimes things just don't work out the way we want them to, and I think that's just something you should keep in the back of your head. I feel like you should just tell them that they need to stop arguing and stop talking about this until you're done school let them know that you want to finish school first because you are struggling to focus because all you can think about is the fact that they're divorcing a lot of parents don't realize the stress that they put on their kids when stuff like this happens your dad is probably worried that you'll side with your mom or that you'll love him less because you you know what he's done to your mom and that's obviously not the case you're gonna love your parents the same even though he's mistreated her so I just feel like you should be open with them and tell them how you're feeling about it. Just let them know that you need them to like hold off until you're done school so that you can focus. School's over in a couple months, like it's already almost April, school will be over in like fucking June and then you'll be getting ready to go off to college. I understand that divorce is hard and it's a hard thing to deal with but you just have to keep in mind that it's just really, it's not your, your battle to be facing or stressing over. It doesn't have anything to do with you. So there's no need to put your energy into it. Though it does affect you, it still has nothing to do with you. And to be honest, if it is a thing where your mom is like, she wants out now and she wants to move out and you know, you have to change locations. A lot of people are afraid of change, myself included. Sometimes we don't like change or it's not that we don't like change, but we're just so used to having things a certain way that once once there's like a change 
in the plans we kind of lose balance and we're scared i feel like that's what you're going through right now but i honestly don't think that you should be stressing over this you sometimes you just have to make the best of situations you can't just be depressed and be upset and lose focus on your dreams and goals because of what's going on around you sometimes you have to just shut the chaos off and focus on you yourself your goals and what where you're headed at the end of the day your parents divorcing all it's going to change is your location you know what i mean your life is not going to spiral out of control which is what a lot of people fear when they find out that their parents are divorcing it's rough but you'll definitely be okay you'll definitely make it out alive i don't know what to say you're always right i was one of the letters that said that my home life is really rough and how my boyfriend at the time was acting shady and how we were 19 and planned on moving and I planned on moving in with him. Well, come to find out, we had an argument. I ended up leaving the house I moved into with him and still gave him one last chance in January. He lied to me, saying that he didn't have sex with a female he was talking to the month we broke up. But I found out that he has been cheating on me with her ever since they met in December. It was a three-year relationship, and I guess I was the stupid one. LOL. He left his phone at my house to show me he wasn't talking to this female anymore, and I text her. So I got the receipts if you want to read them. He basically had sex with this female a week after we broke up, unprotected, and has never used a condom with her, and came back to me acting like he wasn't doing a damn thing. And this whole time while we have been back together, these last couple of months have been fucking. When I found out, I slapped him up crazy. He's blocked on everything. But sorry, I had to tell you, and sorry for the spelling errors. I literally found out this morning. Take Bo's advice, people. She ain't lying. I am attaching the conversation. Ugh, sorry for not listening, Bo. I'm so disappointed in myself. Okay, let's see these text messages. Blank is always going to want to be with you. This is a nice side bitch. That is a cheating ass nigga. Well, she left him, so that's good. You can call me Kayla. Even if this is too long for your video, I'd appreciate a response. Thank you so much for taking the time to read this. It means a lot. When I was one, my parents separated, and as dumb as fuck as it sounds, I've truly still struggled with it. I'm 20 years old, and a third year college student and currently writing to you in a boring ass lecture lol but their separation allowed for a lot of darkness in my life I was always an object to piss off the other person I lived with my father until I was 12 to 13 my stepmom was physically emotionally and mentally abusive I've been removed from my home by Child Protective Services, gone to court, and gotten doctors, teachers, and neighbors involved before, and placed with my mom temporarily. When I was six, my stepmom gave me a black eye, and my father and uncle that lived with us didn't mind putting their hands on me too. When I was in the third grade, my dad beat me so bad that the school found out and they had people secretly talk to me from the court system. The day I learned that he hated me was when the police department informed him about the pending charges for child endangerment towards him, and he came home and looked at eight-year-old me with the utmost hatred. And I know what you're thinking. When I asked my mom, she didn't try to get me out of my dad's house. She always says she tried her hardest, yada, yada, yada. My stepmom was so mean, she'd hide food for me in the house. This has me left with low self-esteem and issues with my physical appearance. So, I went to the gas station and shoplifted food. When my mom asked me where I got the money from and didn't believe me when I said my mom gave it to me, she took me back to the gas station and asked the clerk if I paid for the food. She went on to tell my dad, who returned me back to the gas station and asked them to call the police. Wow. When the cop got there, he begged her to take me to juvie, and she refused after she agreed to at least handcuff me. What 12-year-old steals things like butter and boxed food? It's not like I even stole candy. Trust me, girl. This isn't even the half of it. When I was 13, I attempted suicide for the first time and ran away to live with my mom a couple times. 
My father registered me as a runaway too, a continuation of his ploy to get me into juvie. This nigga also is very rich, so he thinks that my mom and I are using my suicide attempt as a plan to finesse him out of child support money when I go to live with her. But when I went to go live with my mom as a teenager, she was abusive too. I hope my mother would have been willing to cater to me and my needs as a child that was living a really living in a really abusive household, but she beat me and abused me emotionally too. Also, let me emphasize that my parents went on to have more kids with their later partners, but I am the only one to ever be hit. I feel as if my parents just see me as a lost cause or something that reminds them of their mistakes. My mom even says she wants to do better for her other kids. And my dad thinks that my stepmom was the biggest victim throughout my life. No joke. As I said, I'm in college and it's been the ultimate mental and emotional roller coaster that and I haven't found a great support system yet. I want nothing but to have a healthy relationship with my mom and dad. But I don't know if they'll ever be capable to provide me with that. Especially because they don't want to talk about the past. Well, there goes therapy. I was gonna say y'all three need therapy together. But that's not going to happen. I started talking to my dad again in the last two years, but he still does little to support me. Like, I'm in school taking out loans and struggling to even buy winter coats while my dad pays more than 80000 a year to send his other kids to one of the best private schools in the entire Midwest. Meanwhile, my mom doesn't even send me the occasional Tupperware filled with pasta to help me out. Are these people I should try to at least be civil? and be on good terms with that I can at least spend holidays with them or should I completely close this door? The only person I have besides them is my grandma who I feel has only stood in the background of all of this even though she knew what was going on. Granted, she doesn't speak English very well and even begged to take custody of me but my dad refused. Bo, your response means a lot and your presence online really brightens my day. Thank you so much. Kayla. This is a very sad story to read. I'm going to say to close that door. The reason I'm saying this is because you're 20 and everything that's happened to you in your past that you have not been able to let go of is going to affect you continuously into your future until you get closure. You need to send both of your parents separate letters expressing everything you feel about them and letting them know that you will no longer try to contact them, you will no longer speak to them, you are finally getting rid of the dead weight in your life. In order to move forward, you need to let go. You can't move forward with extra baggage. There's only one bag allowed on each plane, bitch. You gotta pay extra for a second bag over 50 pounds. So, you gotta let go of the dead weight. You really can't be dwelling on what's happened to you over throughout your life um it's not your fault it's not your fault if your parents didn't treat you how they were supposed to if they didn't show you that love you needed as a kid we don't get to choose our parents and our parents definitely don't get to choose us even if they do lay down together and create us they don't get to choose who they get what they get and how they get it i know that when you come out of such hurtful situations when is your time to become a parent you're going to love unconditionally you're going to give your kid everything that you didn't get to have and you're going to be an amazing mom I know you're not thinking about that right now but that is what you're gonna want for your kid and as long as you break the cycle and you do things better than they did then you're a-okay you'll be a-okay and it, the same goes for choosing a mate you're going to want to stay clear of people or men that are like your father, that remind you of your father. And it's going to be tough to do that because there's always going to be that void there that has never been filled. I've dealt with the void my whole life and I'm always going to have to deal with that void. But I'm fine. Like As much as we want certain things, certain relationships, you really have to make a decision as to whether it's worth it. Your parents have shown you on more than one occasion that they're not even worth that energy from you. They're not even worth you wanting that relationship with them. So I do 100% think you need to close that door. Hello? Yo. What's up? What are you doing? 
filming? I hate you. Y'all stop me. <laughs> I'm never filming. I always film super late. Like, it's 10 o'clock. I want to be done. <laughs> I have an idea. I just have to shoot with you. Okay. So I just saw a picture on Twitter. Love that. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. It ain't nothing to cut that bitch off. Like, you just gotta cut them off, really. Tell them how you feel so that they know. First of all, when you tell somebody how you feel, you're putting the ball in their court. Let them know that you is not feeling them as human beings, okay? Let them know that they have wronged you. Let them know that you're done with them. Trust and believe your parents kick themselves in the ass every day because they know what they've done to you. They know what they've done. And they, or they know they haven't done for you. They know that they haven't been there for you. And don't think that your parents aren't going to have to deal with that somewhere down the line. God will deal with your parents for you. You don't have to deal with them anymore. You're 20 years old. You need to let it go and let them know that you are, you are letting it go. Let them know you forgive them for everything, but you want nothing to do with them. And that's just it. Like At this point in your life, they can't even do anything for you. And money is not everything. And so in my deadbeat dad story, I actually tell you guys how... Actually, did I tell you guys? I was at my sister's house and she said my father wanted to see me and I said I don't want to see him. And she's like, what if he has money for you or something? I said, do I look like I need somebody coin? And I was broke at the time, honey. I was homeless, bitch. I was like, do I look like I need somebody's money? Like, do I? I was, well, I wasn't necessarily broke I was homeless but I wasn't broke well I was broke but I wasn't like piss piss poor you know what I mean I had a job or did I just quit I had money in my bank account and I didn't need any money from him I didn't care at that point because that's all I used to try to get out of him I didn't care to build a relationship because there was nothing there was nothing to build at whatever point it was and so once I stopped asking him for money it was just like there's nothing left like there's not there's no reason to even engage because when i was asking for money i wasn't getting what i needed you're saying that your dad is loaded and he's paying for his kids to go to private schools but he's not helping you get through college when he gets to the pearly gates him and your mama finna suffer honey don't don't sleep my dad's gonna suffer too once God starts questioning his little ass, okay? So, just know that your parents will be served. They're a good, a good batch of karma. Just know that. And don't worry about, don't worry about them not supporting you. Because at this point, you're grown and you can start to support yourself. Student loans suck. That's why I was never one to want to go to college. Not that I didn't want to go to college, but... That's why I was never want, I never wanted to take out a student loan to go to school because I knew and I witnessed it too many times, people being in debt. But follow your dreams and everything will work out in the end. Financially, romantically, life in general will always work itself out in the end. So don't, don't try to rack your brain figuring out how you're gonna pay your student loans. Everybody got student loans, girl. Everybody in debt. Don't worry, you ain't alone. That's all you need to know. <laughs> You're not alone. Hey, Bo, so I'm going to be brutally honest since I can't say it to anyone else. I moved cities to live with my dad for the school year, and I wasn't as eager to make friends considering how different everyone was from what I'm used to. I didn't really like anyone. They just weren't my type of people, but I ended up making friends with a girl. I'll call her Lonnie. From the beginning, Lonnie was kind of not well kept. Over time, I noticed that she wasn't as fortunate as me. Her situation at home was much different, but not that bad. She came to school wearing the same thing, smelling bad, and not keeping her hygiene up as a female should. <laughs> so, this triggered me, LMAO. I could not deal with her acting like she didn't love herself. That's one of the only things that will really push me to my breaking point. Females that don't keep themselves as they should. So long story short, her family is pretty nasty. They can't act right in public. Just an entire mess. So I've learned my lesson not to go anywhere with them. Oh, I know somebody like that. <laughs> She's always at my house and with my family because quite honestly, I feel like I owe it to her. I wouldn't want to be around my family either if I was her. 
She's also a bugaboo. She follows everything I do and can't think for herself. She even tried to get into a program with me completely out of her school district just to follow after me. She's not all that bad, but it's not like she can't shower, use a little soap every once in a while. No, bitch, not every once in a while. She needs to use it every day. What? what? <laughs> um, she just won't take the time to do it. Gross. I already lowered my standards in order, to, in, in order to make friends at this school because I usually choose my friends wisely, but I wanted to make my time in this new city worth it, so I adjusted. Let me tell you something, okay? <laughs> I will literally bathe you myself if I have to. I'm not walking around with no stank pussy girl, no stank armpit bitch, no stanky girl, period. I will give you clothes. I will make sure that you are up to my standards, okay? That's what you need to be doing. You need to shower her, wash her hair, give her clothes, buy her a panty set. Child, you need to just mold her into being a better version of herself. There's no excuse. If you have a home, electricity and water there is no excuse for you to be stanking even if you wear the same clothes every day there is no excuse for you to be stanking in these streets but let me continue the problem is that i don't know what i should do because i'm starting to just venture out on my own not pay her any mind because i'd rather be by myself than seen with her honestly <laughs> this is so it's not funny but it's funny i'm so sorry you just remind me of myself like you're so bougie. That sounds really shady, but there's no nice way to put it. You are who you hang out with, okay? <laughs> In that order, man. Okay? That's not who I want to be seen with. Should I cut her off completely and just solo it out for the rest of the year? Or deal with it and constantly have to bite my tongue when dealing with her shenanigans? This is long as fuck, so I'll just end it here. You don't have to put it in Botox. I just want your input. Thanks, love. Honestly, I feel like you should be honest with her, and maybe she'll open up with open up to you, but, like, since she's always at your house anyway, maybe you should let her bathe. Maybe she doesn't have hot water at her house. I don't fucking know. Let her bathe, though. Get her a nice little basket. Tell your daddy that you y'all need to buy her something because she's stanking, like... Help her out, okay? Buy her some Vagisil wash and let her get cleaned up because I don't like unkept females either. Maybe on a lazy Sunday, but not every day of the week, honey, okay? You need to keep yourself clean, okay? Wash your ass and I could not deal with no smelly ass bitch around me. I just couldn't, like... It's so weird because I, the way you described her has me imagining what she might look like and it's just giving me a visual of a dirty little scraggly girl. But if you're truly feeling bad for her, I think you should try to talk to her and like help her out. Just help her out. If she's not able to get new clothes, like get her a new set of clothes, a tracksuit, you know, something, che something from Walmart, like... Give her something, okay? They sell cheap ass tracksuits at Walmart. You can get her a damn tracksuit and she can wear that instead. Like, get her some changes of clothes, get her new underwear. She'll probably really appreciate it, one. But, like, you gotta get her to bathe. Um, scrub them armpits, shave them legs, you know. I don't think you should cut her off. But, like, <laughs> you remind me of me because I feel like that would be my luck. Like, I would be, like, just my luck. Like, I come to a new city, I make one friend, and the bitch is crazy. That's basically what would happen to me, so that's why this story is funny to me, because I just feel like this is something that would definitely go on in my life. Like, that has happened to me before, so not not a stanky bitch, just crazy. I don't think you should cut her off. I think that's really mean to cut her off, because she's a little stank. <laughs> I think you should just give her a makeover, you know? That's, how, that's the nicest way to help somebody that is a little on the struggling side. Just give them a makeover. Hell, take her to the thrift store. The thrift store got all the finds, okay? I love the thrift store, my bougie ass. You got some cute ass shit in the thrift store. Don't sleep on the thrift store. You guys, you guys can get a whole wardrobe for her at the damn thrift store. Do not sleep. Cute ass shit over there, okay? So help her out. Don't cut her off because you're probably her only friend like she's your only friend. And if she's a good friend to you, then she's a good friend to you. And she doesn't deserve to be left in the dust because she stinks. <laughs> anyway, you guys, that's it for this Botox. I love you all and I will definitely see you in the next one.